Dear brothers and sisters, last night I had a dream in which I heard the words, we're in the wrong city. I saw what looked like a very small home on the ledge of a mountain and it was about to fall off. I heard some discussion about putting an infinity pool over the edge. The small home was teetering on the edge of infinity. As I looked up the steep snow-covered mountain that it was perched on, that could have been a black diamond ski run, I saw a person dressed in a warm winter parka making the virgin trek to the top. There were really only two choices for anyone, go up or go down. It was clear the current location wasn't a stable long-term home. It was about to go sliding downhill at any moment. I looked inside the small home vehicle through what seemed like prison bars and seeing people in their beds sleeping, I called out, what are you doing in there? The answer came back, we're sleeping. When the brunette lady inside woke up, she flipped out her hair very high. I knew she had high-minded morals and I liked her hair, but I could do without the flipping out. I felt a little like Winnie the Pooh wearing a small hat, but I remembered his quote, you are braver than you believe, stronger than you seem, and smarter than you think. Someone named Fair One, standing nearby, asked my beloved bridegroom to pray for me. I saw that the home slash vehicle was nearly out of fuel, so I did my best to stir it up a little to give it a little more life. But it was clear the vehicle needed a trip to the filling station for a fill-up. The first filling station it approached, though, was like a decorative museum, and even their tanks had no fuel. I did see one desert plant surviving in one of their tanks. I then saw the vehicle without enough fuel scramble for an empty parking space next to a pickup truck facing forward that looked ready to go at any minute. The people in the vehicle low on fuel were going to try to siphon off some of the fuel from the pickup truck. Without it, they would never make the trip home. Then I saw a boat that looked like a ferry full of people crossing the river. One young, blonde, straight-haired boy was tired of riding the boat with everyone and decided to jump into the water and swim on his own. But I was concerned because he jumped out in front of the boat and it looked like it ran over him. But he survived and swam alongside the boat for a while and then he swam behind the boat for quite some time. I was concerned that he must be getting very tired and someone must have pulled him out of the water and handed him to me because soon thereafter I carried him and tended to his needs. The ticket collector came by and asked for the young man's red ticket. I tried to cover for the young man, saying that perhaps his red ticket had fallen out of one of his pockets and into the water while he was swimming. Everyone needs their own red ticket to cross the river into the heavenly Mount Zion. Jesus, born of a virgin, paid for everyone to have a red lift ticket to heaven by shedding his red blood on the cross as the payment for our sins, washing our quote unquote black diamond sins as white as snow. Jesus made a way, he paved the way, he is the way. He died, rose again, and ascended to heaven so that we could follow him by being caught up in the resurrection slash rapture. Everyone must ask the Heavenly Father for a red lift ticket, and He will gladly and freely give it to all who ask. But the journey to heaven can be a long and tiresome trek, often a crowded one and sometimes a lonely one. And we need a full tank and enough oil to successfully and victoriously make the trip home. Everyone in the procession is expected to carry his or her own torch, either a lamp with a small oil tank or a stick with a red rag soaked in oil on the end of it, which requires occasional re-soaking to maintain the flame. The parable of the 10 virgins in Matthew 25, 1 to 13 reminds us that Christ is coming soon and his people must be ready, not just collectively, but individually. 
One person's faith in Jesus cannot save another, and we must be prepared for whatever arises in our lives, keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus at all times while we eagerly await his coming. The virgins were sleeping when the call came and they scurried to try to make things right, but they needed more oil. They were trying to enjoy the benefits of Christian community without true love for Christ. They are more concerned about the party. And when Christ returns, they are found going away to make the purchase. Their hope is that their association with believers, in other words, give us some of your oil, will help them get to the end and get to heaven. But boy, can these people who act quite needy give us some of your oil, weigh down a young lad with a pickup truck so much so that his own care has to become a priority. It can be tiresome for him to keep healthy boundaries and difficult for him to continue extending forgiveness over and over to people who keep latching onto him, trying to siphon off all his fuel, weighing him down without any of God's power or direction in their own lives. The pickup truck that had a full tank was ready to go at any minute. When we're full of oil, a consistent looking for Christ's coming will mark our lives. The pickup truck with the full tank facing forward was looking with eagerness to the coming of Christ. They had saving faith and had determined that whatever occurs, be it lengthy time or adverse circumstances, when Jesus returns, they will be looking to Jesus and for Jesus with eagerness. Titus 2, 11 to 14 says, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. It teaches us to say no, to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions, and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age while we wait for the blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen.